Welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysing, my partner, Malik Hill, and we are already into March. So March, March Madness sort of has begun. Uh, we've already had some crazy games in college basketball recently. We did take a week off last week because of uh, Michigan weather, uh, but it's finally nice out today, actually, even though it's 40, but it's sunny and it it feels good. It was in the 50s when I came in. Oh, so, is it? Yeah. I, Sun is out. Yeah. Random, <laughs> random Michigan so, weather. So living yeah. in Michigan, I do not... I do not look at the weather ever because I just know it's going to be random. It's never going to make sense. So I just let it happen. So I always surprised. That's good to know. Um, so I've finally been doing some research on college basketball. So we'll get into that today. Um, we do have to go over some of the NBA all-star stuff. Uh, not too much to talk about in the NBA, but we'll, we'll get to it. Um, but I've been watching a lot of college basketball. Malik, have you stepped up your college basketball game now that we've We've made it into March. Have you so, started watching more? or? I, I have a group chat with a, a few friends. Uh, we're avid college basketball watchers, and our group chat is called College Ball Sickos. Nice. And we've we've been tapping into the ESPN Plus games. Mm-hmm. I watched Bellarmine beat North Florida at the start of the ASUN tournament the other day. Nice. Yeah, nice. Nice little buzzer beater to start the conference tournament. So I've been tapped in. And uh, they're yeah. already out, though, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> they lost to Liberty. Yeah, Queens beat uh, Florida Gulf Coast. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, tapped into the lower, to the smaller schools, trying to make a miracle run. Do you remember when the Florida Gulf Coast team— Dunk City? Wasn't that already, like, 2014 or 2016? It was 13. I, it was, Holy yeah. moly. It was 2013. Time flies. Oh, boy. <laughs> it was 10 years ago. Okay. <laughs> the emergence of Dunk City. That's wild. Yeah. I, I mean, I even just think to, like, UMB, UMBC winning over Virginia. I forget about that sometimes. That's already been. That was, like, 27 to year. Yeah, five, six years or so. That's crazy. Yeah. I, I don't like it. Um, I don't like the passage <laughs> of time. But anyway, um, so we'll get into the, you know, the main college basketball teams right away, and then we'll slowly dive into some of the. The smaller schools to watch out for. I have a early black bracketology uh, report that I'll pull up, and we'll kind of talk about some of those teams. But uh, Malik, give us a, a Michigan update since they've been kind of they're riding that bubble, but they're they're kind of getting into gear a little bit. Listen, but but I don't trust any team. Okay, I every time we talk about Michigan, Michigan State, I cannot, I can't trust them no matter what happens. So let me hear your take. Listen, they're there's a quote from The Godfather 3. Michael Corleone. Every time I want out, they pull me back in. <laughs> they pull me back in. I quit on them a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And then they win a good game. And then they lose. And uh, it's, it's, it's so... It's frustrating. Mm-hmm. They, they're on their first three-game win streak all season. At the end of the season. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they've uh, they lost one game in the past. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They've won seven out of eight. Which is what they were supposed to do. Yeah, and they go to Illinois and to Indiana to end the season. They're 17 and 12. They're 11 and 7 in the Big Ten, which is hilarious. They're, mm-hmm. they're tied with three other teams, but they're third in the Big Ten right now yeah. after this weird, disappointing season. Mm-hmm. But watching Doug McDaniel, watching him grow and emerge into the point guard he's becoming, I, I've just enjoyed watching him so much. He's so tough. He hits shots every time they need buckets. He makes plays. He's he's not a great, like a really good defender, but he plays hard. So I've I've loved watching him. Kobe Bufkin. More and more Michigan fans are starting to get scared that he's going to be gone after the season mm-hmm. because his high-level scoring potential is finally starting to come out. 
He had a career high 28 against Wisconsin in their last game. And he was getting real like pro level buckets. So I love that. Hunter Dickinson is doing what he has to do. He hit that the biggest shot of his career against Wisconsin. They're just doing enough. They're doing what it takes to get wins. Mm-hmm. Their win at Rutgers was probably the most impressive win they've had this season. A tough grinded out fifty eight to forty five defensive game. And they're they're teetering right now. They're right now they're like right outside the bubble. But you win one of these last two games, and then you win a game or two in the Big Ten tournament, mm-hmm. and you're most likely in. Yeah. Especially seeing their their conference record, seeing that they're third in conference. Right. So I'm I'm cautiously optimistic right now. Yeah. Just seeing seeing the growth that they've made in the past few weeks and knowing that they can still just implode with Jawan Howard as their head coach. Yeah. So I'm I'm still not super giddy excited. But there's a chance they can make the tournament again and not break the streak. Yeah. I think the crazy thing right now about the Big Ten is that basically it's going to come down to the Big Ten tournament. And the scary part for that is we hear it every year that there's controversy because the Big Ten tournament ends on Selection Sunday. And a lot of people feel like that doesn't because – they have to kind of have an idea of what the tournament brackets are going to look like going into that, that a lot of those Big Ten teams are already kind of slated in. Um, And the Big Ten is just so crazy that, you know, somebody could make some miracle run in that tournament and possibly make a bid for them. So hopefully uh, there is no controversy and hopefully it it works out. In the past decade, Michigan did it twice. Right. There was the year, the whole airplane thing where they played in practice jerseys. Mm -hmm. They ended up winning the tournament that year. And then when they played the Big Ten tournament in New York and Mo Wagner was going crazy on everybody, they ended up winning that year. So I think that was the year they made the championship against Villanova. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Michigan has done it twice. A few teams have made weird – Iowa did it uh, last year and yeah. they ended up losing to Richmond in the tournament. So, yeah, the Big Ten tournament, it's always a bunch of fun and craziness. Right. Um, before we get into Michigan State, I just want to get an idea for people at home. For the Big Ten – do you say they're in or they're out of the tournament? And I'll go through one by one. Purdue. In, yeah. Maryland. Most likely in. Michigan. I'm going to guess that they make it barely, yeah. like probably like first four okay. or last four. And you think they have to just win one of these last two games because they're both against tough opponents. Yeah. And then pseudo make a run in the Big Ten tournament. Yeah, win one of these, win two games. I think if if you if they only win one, there's still a chance it's they yeah they get left out. Okay. Um, Northwestern, in, they're 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 probably like set at like a six seed. Yeah, which is good for Northwestern. Iowa, who has been streaking lately, in, probably like a nine. Yeah. Uh, Indiana, in. in. Um, Illinois, most likely in. Okay. Michigan State. See, the, this is the one they're go, they're going to get in. Yeah, but I I don't I don't know what it is. I I feel like they're gonna get a seed that they might not deserve. Mm-hmm. Like I feel they're like an eighth or ninth seed team. Yeah, at best, mm-hmm. and I feel like they might get like a six or seven for some reason. Yeah, but who I, knows? I they, mean, yeah. a little sneak preview the the bracket that we're gonna look at that was recently updated yesterday. Has Michigan State slotted as a seven seed at the moment? Yeah, they need to beat Ohio State. Yeah, they need to just get it done. Yeah, uh, your business. Rutgers. I don't know. You think they've just fallen off know. too much at the yeah. end here? Ever since Milwaukee Mag got hurt, they're starting to guard. The offense has just been a struggle for them, mm-hmm. uh, a serious struggle. So I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, so that's that would be the cutoff. Yeah. They're teetering towards the NIT. Here's another interesting one: Penn State. They got Northwestern and Maryland to close out their season. If they win I one of those. Like, man, I feel like Penn State might get in. Yeah. And that that's it's strange saying when Rutgers has a better conference record mm-hmm. and overall record, but And Rutgers just Penn beat State Penn just State. seems like a team that's just like been around there yeah. and gotten enough wins. Yeah. And so and they, it, they, they, they 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 it's probable they end up in NIT, but I don't know. We'll see. 
And they, they might end up being an NIT team. They've been in a lot of close games. They've had a lot of big wins. Yes. They destroyed Michigan at home. Yeah. They beat up on Iowa a didn't little they, bit. Didn't they beat Michigan State? They beat Indiana. Uh, did they beat Michigan State? I thought they did, like here. Uh, I thought they beat them in Breslin. Doesn't look like it, no. Oh, okay. They played once. Michigan State once. Oh, okay. 67-58. But they've had some big wins, and they've been in a lot of games. Yeah. So that's going to be the weird one. So really, the only Big Ten teams that are like... They're only like a guaranteed four to five teams right now. Yeah. But there's a lot that could make noise. The ones that are basically out are probably Wisconsin, Nebraska, Ohio State, and Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, but everybody else in the Big Ten... Wisconsin's probably in IT. Yeah. Everybody else vying for a spot in the tournament, which is crazy. Um, so moving on to Michigan State. Oh, boy. They, uh, they got lucky last night. They, uh, they played Nebraska. Nebraska came out shooting really well. And Michigan State couldn't hit anything. Uh, but luckily in the second half, they got it going. Um, felt like they couldn't miss. They hit uh, 12 threes in the second half and um, got it going. And the one thing that I'll say is that for a while, I was really nervous about this team of who could take over because it seems very inconsistent. I'm starting to build more and more confidence of Tyson Walker. He's slowly starting to prove it to me night in and night out that he can hit big shots. He can make plays. And to me, like he's, he looks better than Max Christie and Max Christie made it to the NBA last year. Uh, he, he was a one and done. He, he was a right. bunch of hype. Tyson but, Walker is an experienced guy. That's, is this his fifth year in college uh, or is this fourth? I can't remember. It might be his fourth. Let me see if I can check real quick. But uh, honestly, I expect an experienced guard with his, with his skill set. To be able to do this. Yes, yeah, it's his fourth. Yeah. Um, but that's what I like to see, though. Um, guys like that typically bode well. Uh, so I feel like the starting lineup for Michigan State is starting to look pretty solid. Uh, the bench is still a little bit questionable, uh, I would say. I mean, we know that like Malik Hall is going to be a guy that's going to be nice to have off the bench. But after that... Kohler's gotten better, but they still just use them in spot minutes for the most part. Yeah. Right now. And I'm still terrified if they get into a matchup in the tournament where they got to face a Zach Eady type player and that they're all around, that they're going to struggle. Um, even in just the, the Big Ten tournament, you know, uh, that's, that's a scary part for them, honestly. And do we have to talk about the Iowa game? Because I don't really want to. I, I was about to ask you a question, and that had a, a part to do with it. Um, so, so the last four games, lose to Michigan, beat Indiana, mm-hmm. big emotional win. Yep. D- absolute b- choke job against Iowa. Just a, a weird choke of a game. Lost to Iowa 112-106. to yeah, And then getting beat by Nebraska for a half, and then you get super hot in the second half. Yeah. Two and two in the last four games. I, what do you like take away from the last four games? I don't know. It's it's so all um, over the place. I think the Michigan game was was kind of the opposite of what I expected. To be honest, I thought they were to come out strong in the Michigan game, um, but that was that was kind of a, a an odd game for them to come into, especially to be a rival rivalry game. So I I don't take much into that. The Indiana win was great. Um, they just looked really good. Uh, so, I mean, I think it's all positives. And then the hard part about the Iowa game is just finishing the game. Like, they looked so good for most of that game. Defense obviously wasn't that good. Um, and Iowa hit the right shots at the right moment. But, like, you can't be too upset with the loss, I guess, because... I don't know. You have to think positively, but I'm I hate the loss for them. But at the end of the day, you would expect that you go back and you think, well, you know, we shot really good, we played really good, we just made some errors, and Iowa Iowa capitalized on them. Um, I think the, my biggest problem with the end of that game was you let 
Tony Perkins multiple times get tap outs for Iowa to get second chances. And that just cannot happen. And that's, that's the problem with Michigan State being small. They have to make sure that they're doing the little things. They have to make sure that they're boxing guys out because otherwise they're going to lose possessions to offensive rebounds um, because they're just they're, they're not big enough. So they have to be that old-school Michigan State grit-and-grind kind of team, and I, I haven't fully seen it. And that that's maybe like the biggest concern is some of the defensive stuff, some of the little things that usually Tom Izzo is good at teaching. Um, so that's, that's like more my concern, I guess, is the little things that you, you know, typically don't think of. Um, and that should just be an inherent thing within the team. Um, but like offensively, they've looked really good lately. Um, and yeah, they've, they've got three different guys that can really heat up. Mm -hmm. They're just going to be like a matchup based team, which is tough going into tournaments like this. I'm trying to think if I have a Big Ten projected tournament bracket. Um, looks like 24-7 Sports has one. Uh, they have Michigan State as the nine seed. Michigan's a three seed because of their record, which, I mean, that all could change in very quickly. But, uh, Right now, Michigan State would be slated to play Illinois, which is terrifying because Illinois is another team that can just shoot you out of the gym if they want to. Um, and that would be a first-round exit for, well, second round technically because they get the bye. But anyway, that would be a tough pill to swallow for Michigan State, and they would probably make the tournament just off of their – quad one wins or whatever early on in the season, but that would be a terrible way for them to enter into the tournament. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, the way it stands now would also put uh, Michigan to play. Where is that? Oh, the sixth game which is either the number six seed. Uh, that's a lot of work to worry about. It'd be like Michigan basically playing Iowa or something like that, uh, which would be a much better matchup for them. So, yeah. I don't know. That's that's the end of the day. I don't know. Have you seen anything from Michigan State that makes you think that they could do something? When Hauser, Aikens, and and Tyson Walker are on, they're hard to beat. They're very hard to beat. And AJ Hoggard has played good point guard lately. Not many turnovers. He's made good good decisions. Like you said, the big, the big man thing is a problem. And that I think will always be a hang up for me, especially when he gets to the tournament. But with Hauser. Aikens and Walker. You got guys that can help you make a run. Because they can all score and they all seem very confident right now at this point of the season. So they're they're the key. Mm -hmm. you, you have to make sure they stay in like rhythm. And they should, at this point, they should get the bulk of the shots. Like, it yeah. shouldn't be, and Malik Hall off the bench too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's the key. But, yeah, you they they have to take the bulk of the shots, and when when Malik Hall comes in, he has to be the spark plug. Yeah, and that's what we talk about all the time. Is like you got to have basically three guys to get you through, and uh, they have them. I just man, that, the consistency thing is I think the biggest problem for me right now is Joey Hauser started the season off hot, kind of went through a cold stretch. And we've seen him do it before. Like he he has these stretches where he looks really good, and then he kind of cools off for a while. Um, right now, I would say that Hoggard and Tyson Walker seem like they've got their consistency down. Um, so if if Hauser or Malik Hall can can be a spark somewhere, I think then they'll be okay. But I don't know. It's just a little nerve wracking, I guess. Is my thoughts right now. 
Um, all right. I kind of wanted to go through some of the bracket stuff that they have right now since we're two weeks away, basically, from Selection Sunday, things like that. Right now, these are all projections. They're all estimated, so nothing's set in stone, obviously. There's a ton to, to go through in these next two weeks. But right now, they have the uh, top overall seed being Alabama for the tournament, which makes sense just because they have tougher opponents than Houston. And the first team that they have out is North Carolina, which is wild. And the last team in that they have is Arizona State, who had a huge buzzer-beating half-court shot against Arizona um, that basically put them into the potential of being in the tournament. So right now they have, for the on the bubble, the last four buys are Memphis, West Virginia, Nevada, and Auburn, with the last four in being Mississippi State, Boise State, Wisconsin, Arizona State, which I feel like Wisconsin is easily going to fall out of that. The first four out is North Carolina, Oklahoma State, Clemson and Michigan. So there's a lot of big names in there, North Carolina and Michigan being the biggest. And then Utah State, Charleston, Penn State, Texas Tech being the next four out, which I think, like we said, Penn State might be able to figure their way into the tournament. Um, Some interesting seeds that I wanted to mention. Um, They have Kentucky now all the way back up to a number six seed. Um, which could be crazy. Um, let's see, where's the, they also have Creighton at a six seed, which I don't know if that's going to hold fruition because Creighton's kind of been falling down lately. I don't know if they, I honestly think they'll stick there. You think because, so? Yeah. Af- after Ryan Kalkbrenner being hurt early in the season, they started to get it back together. They got back in the top 25. They have been kind of on and off, but the Big East has been extremely top-heavy in the top four or five, so I think they still get their respect. I think my thought just goes into the Big East tournament could be scary as well. So it could be one of those other ones where a lot of movement happens within that tournament. Um, Like I mentioned, they do have Michigan State at a seven seed right now and potentially playing Florida Atlantic. And then that is terrifying if they play Florida Atlantic. Yeah. Florida Atlantic has a one of the best bigs in the country. Right. Yeah, because a uh, a seven seed would be facing a tournament champion who is the ten seed. Um and even if Michigan State made it past Florida Atlantic, they would be in a, in the same bracket as a two seed where they would have to play projected Kansas State in the next round, which is also terrifying. Yeah. Uh Kansas State, a team that can get red hot at any point um and that's just that's nerve-wracking um they got northwestern as a six seed we said that's probably around where they'll end up um let's see what's another one they have rutgers as a nine seed in this um so they do have rutgers making this tournament um they would be playing somebody like missouri which would be tough but uh Oh, that's what I wanted to count. I wanted to see how many Big Ten teams they had. So they have Wisconsin. They have Iowa. They have Indiana. Uh, I said Wisconsin. That's showing it again at the bracket. Uh, Purdue. uh, Michigan State. Illinois. Northwestern. And Rutgers. And Maryland. So that's a lot of Big Ten schools and not including Michigan. Um, So like we said, it's going to be six, seven, eight Big Ten teams uh, that could make the tournament, which is going to be crazy. I don't know. Yeah, they have nine teams making it from the Big Ten, being the number one uh, conference. They also have SEC having eight teams, Big 12 having seven the ACC only having five teams is kind of wild. Worst ACC <laughs> year I've ever seen. Yeah. It's not even close. Right. Um, so, yeah. Tournament's going to be crazy. We've said it multiple times. But, uh, yeah. What are some of those top 25 teams that you're looking at, Malik, to, that you think are going to make, like, a big run in the tournament? 
Let's start with that first, and oh, then we'll get into Predicting this. a big run, it, you know it's always a long shot. Uh, you usually get a few one seeds, mm-hmm. a few top three seeds, but a team that I just love watching and hope really makes a run is St. Mary's. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of the way they play. I love Aiden Mahaney as a freshman point guard, the way he can score and just take over a game. Big St. Mary's fan. Mm-hmm. I, I said I'm a – Huge fan of what Shaka Smart has done. Yeah, all the way up to f- the sixties. Yeah, this is the highest they've been ranked in, I think, since the early eighties or late seventies. It's crazy. Yeah. They don't have a single superstar player. They just have a bunch of guys that fit together. Everybody knows their role and it just works. Yeah. So Marquette could be one of those teams that's extremely tough to get out mm-hmm. in the tournament. Um honestly. I think Indiana could surprise. If if Trace Jackson Davis and Jalen Hood Shafino are on, they're hard to beat. Because mm-hmm. Jalen Hood Shafino put 35 on Purdue at Purdue. Yeah. And they swept Purdue this season. So they're 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 pretty confident going mm-hmm. into the tournament. UConn is so on and off, but when they get hot, they can get it. And I say Kansas State. As my main team, okay, my main team that I think could make a like a elite eight, maybe final four run. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they they have the guards, they have the coaching. Maybe the two most important things in a tournament run. Yeah, high level guards and high level coach. Yeah, I'm nervous to pick a Big Ten school after the whole Iowa debacle last year. I don't know how you can. <laughs> so, I don't know how you can? No, like for I. I like Purdue, but I I don't know if they can make a run. Yeah, and I'm I'm starting to lean again towards Kansas, which is I don't like hey, to start doing that really kind of good. stuff. Yeah, they, they broke the record for most quad one wins in a season. They have like 15. Yeah, so I I don't like to do that, but they are looking solid again. Um, I think Gonzaga is always going to be an interesting one, especially now that they're they're ranked tenth right now. Um, they their tournament will actually be big for them, I think, as far as seeding goes, um, because it's basically going to be them and St. Mary's. Um, so that'll be kind of a defining moment for their season. Um, let's think, any other teams? I still like I like Providence a lot. Still, I do too. And I know that it was my preseason pick as well, but. I still think, even though Illinois is not up there, I think they have the potential to do something. Um, it looks like they're starting to give Matthew Meyer more like starter type minutes. They're not using him off the bench as much, which I think is actually probably in their favor to just play their best players. Um, so I'd watch out for them. Um, and I mean, Kentucky is always kind of spooky too because they're. I don't know. They had that weird lapse in the middle of the season as well, but they they haven't been to. Uh, I can't remember if it's Elite Eight or Final Four. They haven't been to. I don't think it might be the Final Four. They haven't been there in like six, seven years. Yeah, which is why Kentucky fans are so angry. Mm-hmm. Which team would you say in this top twenty-five concerns you the most, or maybe even top fifteen? Like some oh of the boy. top top teams. Because uh, first t- of all, I'm gonna go Tennessee because they always. Yeah. They they always are fantastic in the regular season, have hype going into That's, the tournament, and then Rick Barnes' teams just never have what it takes. That was going to be runs. my pick even before the Ziegler inter- injury. Um, he tore his ACL. I did not know he tore his. ACL. Yeah, so that so, throws. Yeah, so Zika- Ziegler. So that's why they were going to be my pick because I was just going to get that out of the way. Yeah, that makes sense. Zakai Ziegler has torn his ACL. Done for the season, um, and he was a big. Big reason for them being good. But even before that injury, I would have picked Tennessee for the exact same reasons that you do. They always, I don't know, they squander for some reason, and they always make me a little nervous. Yeah, I I like this Gonzaga team this year, but to me it feels like something is missing. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is exactly. Maybe it's a, like they have their star player in Drew Timmy. Mm-hmm. Julian Strother has taken steps ahead. He's a big-time shooter. But besides them, like I, I don't, I don't know who like the, yeah, those guys are that you rely on in the tournament. Mm-hmm. Besides them too, yeah. 
So yeah, I'm I'm really not sure. Another team that concerns me is UCLA. I, I don't know. I like UCLA. I, Ever see, since they got Amari Bailey back, I feel like they're kind of complete. They just I don't. They have not felt like the team that they were when they made the Final Four run, and that was already what two years ago. And it, there was like all this hype around Johnny's Juice. Well, honestly, this Jaime this Hakez. is a this is a better this is a better team. I, that team. Johnny Juzang was unconscious for right. a whole tournament. Right. And they just couldn't miss for like five straight games. This team is better than that team. Yeah. I don't know. Something about this team just kind of makes me nervous. And I don't know if it's just because they're in the Pac-12, you know, whatever. But I I get a little nervous about them for some reason. I like them. They're just on my radar. Before we move on, I want to do one last. A team that is under the radar, maybe maybe a mid-major that you think could make a run. Mm-hmm. I have one. Okay. Out of the Mountain West. Not my San Diego State Aztecs. <laughs> they maybe could make a Sweet 16, but I'm not sure. I'm going Boise State. Hmm. Probably the most under the radar, really good team this entire season. Mm-hmm. They're 23-7, and 13-4 and in conference, second in the conference behind San Diego State. They've got... Their leading scorer, Max Rice, is one of the best shooters in the country, mm-hmm. over 40% from three. Their point guard, Marcus Shaver, senior point guard, tough, makes good decisions, can score and get assists. Mm-hmm. They got good big men. They, they're they just a well-balanced, like, really good team that I feel like they could just shock everybody and just, like, get to the Elite Eight. Yeah. And everybody's just like, where did Boise State come from? Mm-hmm. And I I really like Boise State. The Broncos might be one of those Cinderellas on my bracket. Sneak preview. <laughs> they might be one. Nice. Um, trying so, to think of say Oakland. A... Say Oakland. <laughs> no. Say Oakland makes a I'm, run. I'm trying to think of like a specific <laughs> team. I'm, um, I would say recently, like watch out for the America East Conference. Like whoever comes out on top on that. Uh, we've seen. Uh, you a big fan? Of, big fan of Vermont. I mean, I like the, the yearly way, catamounts. I mean. Th- they're just a three-point gunning team. That's what I always like. They've made, they've had close, close games. Uh, I don't they know if it was last year or two years. In, like in the early 2010s and the 2000s, they had a few teams. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've seen Bryant come out of that conference look pretty strong. Um, this year it's what uh, UMass Lowell or something is like their best. So the top three in that conference, Vermont is always at the top. They're yeah. fourteen and two in conference. Mm-hmm. Next is UMass Lowell, and then New Hampshire. That's weird. They're usually terrible. Good for New Hampshire. Yeah. Fourth UMBC. It'd be incredible if they made another Labradors. Bryant being fifth is kind of disappointing because they all, they have like the most talented roster in the league. Yeah. But it looks like they just weren't able to put it all together. Mm-hmm. Um. I yeah. can't think of any teams off the top of my head, at least, that I haven't already mentioned. Like, I mentioned Oral Roberts before. Yeah. And they're kind of a known quantity nowadays. Um, let's see, is there... There's nobody really in the Missouri Valley this year that's going to do anything. I think Drake, Tucker DeVries, oh, too. Yeah, Tucker DeVries and Drake are pretty yeah, good. Yeah, Drake is one team. Um, Bradley and Drake kind of run that conference as of late, yeah. but... We've seen, we've usually seen some things out of the Missouri Valley teams, but I, I don't know if they're going to do it this year. Um, yeah, maybe I'll save that for next week of a specific team that I can really look at and determine. Okay. Actually, let me look at the uh, the. Did I pull up? The, oh, I already lost the bracketology thing. Yeah, we'll worry. We'll worry about it later. Um, I've been watching so much college basketball, I can't even keep up to be honest um but there's a there's there's a lot of good teams there's a lot of close games like i was saying i just watched the uh seton hall and villanova game um i don't think either of those teams are going to make the tournament but uh they're both kind of on the cusp they'd have to do something in their uh conference tournament but they're interesting um do you want to take a minute and talk about antoine davis real quick I mean, we could take a few seconds. Do you I have, mean, like, I, how, what is your feeling? Okay, so for people that don't know, Antoine Davis plays for Detroit Mercy. 
He's been playing there for, what, five years? Yeah. Uh, averaging 28 points a game this year. Mercy is known for always having one of the top scorers in the entire NCAA all the time. Um, but he scored 38 in their first tournament game, and now they play – who are they playing? Youngstown State in the second round? Yeah, they play Youngstown tomorrow at 8. Um, so because they got the upset, they won in the first round with Antoine Davis scoring 38. He needs 25 against Youngstown State to break the NCAA scoring record, which is held by Pete Maravich, who did it in three years. Listen, it's going to be a great accomplishment. Congratulations to Antoine and his dad, who's the coach. But I've, I'm I'm so Pete Maravich blinded. I can't I can't be happy about it. Like you said, Pete did it in three years. Mm -hmm. He averaged 44 a game. (laughs) Yeah. With no three point line. Mm -hmm. Antoine Davis has had five years on a three point line. Yeah. Now, the fact that he's done it, it's it's extremely, no no other person has broken the record and he's about to do it. So, congratulations to him. Yeah. But Pete doing it in three years with no three point line and averaging over 40 to me can never be topped. Mm -hmm. It it just can't. Yeah. And. It's just it's just tough because a lot of these. I mean, I know it's not his fault that he got an extra year, um, but that just makes it tough because he's a bucket getter. So yeah. giving him an extra year is crazy. So yeah, I don't know. It, it'll be bittersweet, I guess. Unless by I mean by chance, Youngstown State could maybe just triple team him or something. I don't know, um, and see what happens. But it's crazy that a record that was held. It's been held since 1970, could be broken. Um, so it took that long to even come at it. And nobody else is even, like, really all that close. Um, you think of all the great scores that have come through college basketball, even the ones that have played for, like, four years and stuff uh, that never got close. So crazy, interesting, a little bit sad. <laughs> but I thought I'd just bring it up because it is – it is a technically monumental moment, I guess. Um, anything else you want to talk about college basketball before we move on? Anything you uh, can think of? I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll do some more uh, like tournament previews or tournament updates since conference tournaments are starting. Some will start ending. Um, we can talk about those uh, next week. And as we prepare for our tournament special coming up in two weeks, two weeks, yep, uh, it should be March fifteenth, I believe. So we'll be here for two hours going over our bracket, making decisions, and seeing if we can get things right. All right, moving on to the NBA, we got to talk about the All Star stuff. The Celebrity game was fun. I don't know if you watched it at all. I watched highlights. Um, it was pretty fun. Uh, they did a thing where they brought legends back, which was Richard Jefferson and Kenyon Martin. Kenyon Martin looked like he could not move, uh, so that was embarrassing. I thought it was Carlos Boozer. Oh, yeah, it was Carlos, yeah, it was Boozer, Carlos right. Boozer. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Not Kenyon Martin. Um, Carlos Boozer looked like he could not he move. He was completely out of shape. Yeah. Um, Richard Jefferson didn't look too bad. He dunked. Yeah. He still got, he still got a little bounce. I mean, he is 6'7". But anyway, um, it was kind of fun to watch. DK Metcalf won the MVP or whatever because he was athletic, I guess. But uh, it was fun. And then we get to Saturday night, and we have the skills competition. I haven't seen a single clip Uh, of the skills competition. The skills competition was all right. So I like the idea of it. Who won? They kind of did the classic skills competition where you run through the – relay race you gotta make a pass dribble around make a runner then make a corner shot and then they had to run and make a layup um they had the team jazz team on Kumpo, and the rookie teams Jaden ivy in the first uh session looked kind of the best and the rookie team did they take that one i think the rookie team took that one so the format was you have like three different competitions. You win one, you get a point. So they won the first one, and then they move on to the passing challenge, 
where there's like three different moving targets. You have to throw like a bounce pass in the middle one, and then you can throw whatever on the two side ones, something like that. Um, and you can't use the same one twice. And you get a certain amount of points for that. Well, the Antenna Kumpo brothers won that one. Uh, so now they have one point. The rookies have one point. The Jazz have zero points. Then it moves on to a final shooting challenge where there's different spots on the court. You make the shot. You get a certain amount of points for where you made the shot. Well, if you win that one, you get two points. So the Jazz team won the shooting competition with Colin Sexton, Jordan Clarkson, and Walker Kessler. So they won the whole thing. So what did the other two events do? All of this just sounds unnecessary. So it was cool. In, all, this all sounds very unnecessary. It was cool in practice, but I hate when competitions do that where they make the final one worth two points so that if by chance there's a tie, they're going to win no matter what. So because each was split the first one, whoever won the last one was winning the whole thing anyway. So it kind of makes the other two pointless, which I don't like. What were they going to do if somebody took the first two competitions and then somebody else won the the, the shooting competition? Then there's a two-way tie. I don't know what they were going to do. That's the only problem I had with it. I liked kind of the idea of it, but it's whatever. Um, I can't get into these skills challenges because of the ones we had as yeah. kids. Watching you Steve, would have Nash, Steve and Nash and Tony and Jason Parker. Kidd and Tony Parker, like mm -hmm. the best point guards in the league, consistently did the skills challenge. Yeah. And they actually would try. That's the problem that I have lately. So then we move on to the three-point contest. Let's talk about your boy. Stop it. <laughs> I was going to avoid it. So the three-point contest, always, you know, typically the one competition that works out pretty good. Pretty exciting. The one problem I have is they keep adding points to it. Why? I knew that when I went into BetMGM on Saturday night to make some bets about shooting three-point contests, I knew I should have bet the over on every person. Because everybody's over was way too low for them adding a four-point thing. I probably would have made a good amount of money. Anyway, I did not. I digress. Damian Lillard won the whole thing. Had a good showing. He, I love that he pulled out the Weber State jersey yeah. being back in Utah. That was cool. Um, I don't know. It was fun. Everybody did pretty good, except for my guy, Kevin Herter. Kind of embarrassed himself. Listen, he's a sniper in in the game, so it does. Yeah. It is what it is. Would have been better if he showed better in the competition. Yeah. Uh, the only problem, I guess, now that I would have with Damian Lillard is he did not beat Clay Thompson or Steph Curry. But uh, you know, they're yeah. better contest shooters. Yeah. But he finally won one. He's been doing it for a a, a, a little while now. Um, Lori Markinen played went pretty good. Um, it was all right. Shouts out to putting Julius Randle in the three-point contest. That's and, fun. And he did it because he just kind of felt like, why not? Um, so then we get to the dunk contest. Now we get to why this podcast is now called the Mac McClung Podcast. <laughs> um, and I I went the extra mile to hype up Mac, and he did it. Yeah. He did exactly what I thought he would do. Mm -hmm. He put on a show. He did super good. The, I think the biggest part for me... All his dunks were clean. He made all of them. He didn't really mess up. Uh, just straight to the point. Did his dunk. Moved on. Everybody else, not so much. Trey Murphy looked pretty good. Yeah, Trey Trey Murphy was all right. Uh, Kenyon Martin Jr. is okay. That first dunk. If he got that first dunk on the first try, it would have been more exciting. Yeah, but it took him like three times. And then Jericho Sims. That look, man. That that pull the paper out of the net dunk is top three lamest dunks yeah. in dunk contest history. Um, top three. If uh, I don't know, like listen, Gerald Green. I get it, Jericho. You are six eleven, and you can put your elbows in the rim. Gerald Green and his birthday cake are ashamed. I mean, yeah. cupcake. Yeah, you could have done something extremely creative, and you just put a fifty in the net. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's all you did. And Jericho Sims did two dunks where he just put his arms in the in the, the rim. The first dunk, I get the two double arms in the rim, showing your bounce. I guess he's the problem but is it doesn't look second good dunk, huge. Uh, I'm second dunk, you just put your put one arm in the rim, pull out. Yeah, he wasn't prepared. No, <laughs> he, he just wasn't. It was bad, and I, I mean, he's got bounce. He's 
He's a hot flyer. Like I said, I kind of like watching him in college, but he wasn't made for the dunk contest. And uh, it's just, it's just more of the same. Like they have got to figure out a way to fix it, and I don't know how. Well, uh, honestly, this is more this is more positive than anybody could have imagined. Yeah, that maybe somebody will come out and try to take on Mac next year. But yeah, the fact the fact that they had a guy show up from the G League and do this was exciting, even though that's also disappointing. Right. Because there's no fixing what people want fixed. Yeah. I just want people to accept it at this there point. There is one positive. Zion Williamson has said. That Zion Williamson isn't doing that contest. I, I know, but he has said that he would be willing to do it. So there's there's a bright light that may be too far away. You know who else said it? And who, if he, if, It's kind of his fault why superstars don't do it anymore. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, LeBron fans. Mm-hmm. LeBron James. First of all, he should have done it as like his rookie or second year. That's when he really should have done it. Mm-hmm. But going into the 2010 season, saying you're going to do the dunk contest. Yeah. Telling everybody you're going to do it on live TV mm-hmm. and then just not doing it the next year. Yeah. Why? Why? Why lie? Why? Why get everybody hyped for something everybody in the world wants to see? Yeah. Everybody wants to see Mm -hmm. the superstars with the most bounce in this contest. Yeah. And And LeBron said, nah. That's why I said Zion's got one year. If he doesn't do it next year, he's done. But we just got to hope he stays healthy. I I don't even think about the dunk contest. But he has opened the window that he might do. I want him to play more than 60 games. Yeah. That's true. 100%. More than 50 at this point. Um, But there's no way. Like, John Morant's not doing it. There's no way. Um, so the, I, I don't even think a cash prize would do it at this point. Yeah, dudes just don't want to do it. Right. I don't know if it's pride or not wanting to be embarrassed. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's a little of everything, unfortunately. But yeah. Um. All right, we got a few minutes. We can look. Oh, in the All Star game. Let's the not, worst. Let's not. Yeah. Jason Tatum broke the record for scoring in the All Star cool. game. Congratulations. Um. The biggest problem that I had with the All Star game, besides just it being bad play, the only somewhat fun part was Jalen versus Jason Tatum in the third quarter. That was it. Yeah. When them two were going back and forth. The problem That's that it. I had, like, if you look at the box score, there's like three guys on each team that had like 25 shots apiece. Everybody else like got zero touches. Like, what is the point of showcasing all of these players if only like three or four are going to even take all the shots. Because half of them aren't going to try. It's just <laughs> wild. Half of them just are just going to go out there and jog. It's just wild. I don't know. And the, the target score thing already has failed. It was cool a few years, but yeah, yeah now it's just like... It's like they've already given yeah. up on it. Um, So, yeah, it's 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 bad. It's, it's real bad. Okay, getting into the actual regular season. Regular season is winding down. We only have... Less than 20 games left, I believe, uh, for most teams. Um, In the East, pretty similar to what we've been seeing for the most part. Milwaukee is on a tear, though, right now. They're number one in the East. They've uh, won 15 in a row. 15 in a row. My God, that's Um, crazy. Boston is right behind them at 44 and 18. Philly moving up the charts. They're 39 and 21. They've been playing good lately. They have lost two in a row, but overall they've been playing good. Um, Cleveland's still standing strong. They're seven and three in their last ten. Uh, New York Shots making a better run. The Knicks eight and two, six and zero oh since they got Josh Hart. Mm-hmm. Jalen Luke Brunson Luke. deserved to be an All Star, and he's putting on for New York. Manuel quickly is looking good off the bench. Yeah. Um, R.J. Barrett might be like the only somewhat negative because he's still not. Like hitting the yeah. level fans want from him. Everything else is panning out yeah. for the most part. And right now they're still without uh, Mitchell Robinson. He I th- he just came back. Did he? I, think, I knew it was think, it was yeah. supposed to be pretty soon here. Um, so that's a that's a big get for them to come back defensively. So hey, you know I was wrong about Sacramento being good. You guys were right, but you guys clown me for picking New York. They're starting to look good this year, down the stretch. Doesn't mean they won't blow it in the playoffs, but I think they're gonna put up a, a real fight against whoever they play. Yeah, I mean, right now they're they're poised to play uh, Cleveland, 
So yeah, that'd be a really entertaining first round series. Brooklyn still hanging around. Um, I am so impressed by Mikael Bridges showing his game. Yeah. Like his full game. Mm-hmm. There was a stretch against Milwaukee the other night where he scored like 10 straight on Giannis. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm impressed. Yeah. They're going to have to battle though to hang on to the sixth seed. Otherwise, they're going to be in the yeah. playing tournament. That being said, they're a pretty uh, eh, meh team right now. They have a lot of guys that can go off yeah. and save them, but their consistency is not there. Like like you said, Mikhail Bridges, he's been showing a lot. Cam Johnson had 27 the other night. Then Whitty does what he does. Cam yeah. Thomas has had a, still getting 20 points off the bench, but is it all going to mesh? I don't know. We'll see. Um, Miami's the seventh seed right now. They're such a weird team. Yeah, they are that weird team. They should be so much better than 33 and 29. And Jimmy Butler kind of called his team out saying that they need to stop losing. It's, um, it's and, weird. Like, Bam Adebayo is having his best year. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it, what it is that they're missing exactly. I, I think it's some of their, their role players. They kind of have Sugo falling off. You're not a big Gabe Vincent fan, Joey? That's what you're saying? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. I mean, they just got Kevin Love, so maybe he's the sp- spark that they need. <laughs> Yeah. Weird to say. Yeah. Um, but or, or realistically, like he could help this team. Cody Zeller's played well for them in the yeah. first few games. Um again, the whole Duncan Robinson thing is has gotten weird. Um I was, people don't even just think about him anymore. Yeah, which is wild. Um they paid him all that money. And then Victor Oladipo as well. So I don't know. They're a weird team. Yeah, strange situation. Like we said. Um, then we got Atlanta, another weird team. Toronto. They fired, they fired their coach. Yeah, they have Quinn Snyder. And now they're hiring. Quinn's, Great hire, Quinn Snyder. Yeah. They really good He hire coached last night. I think it was his first game. Oh, okay. Um, but they're another weird team. Like, their DeJounte Murray thing looked really good at first, and it's kind of leveled off. Um, Trey Young went back to being solo Trey Young, and it kind of, yeah, mm-hmm. messed things up. Toronto, kind of weird. Like these are all the weird teams. Uh, Toronto's right there. They didn't really make any. They didn't sell like a lot of people thought. So now they're still hanging on to the the tournament, the playing tournament. Washington is the tenth seed. There's been times where Washington looks really good, which is surprising. And then they're and then the they're rest not. of the time they look like Washington. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like people forget, like Kristaps Porzingis is there. He's been hurt a little He's bit. He's having lately. like his best season. He's having and a it's, really. It's quiet, so sad. Yeah. That nobody knows. Yeah. He's been healthy for most of the season, and he's been playing really well. Same with Kyle Kuzma. Kyle Kuzma's having a great yeah. season, but he's hidden in Washington. Bradley Beal's finally back. And they're all right. They're they're all right. Um, and then we got Chicago no, and Indiana. Don't don't bring up the last few. Don't, Chicago just, and Indiana though. Don't don't leave them out. <laughs> Chicago signed Pat Bev and released Goran Dragic. Congratulations. Yeah. Indiana's young. They're they're figuring it out. They're yeah. They'll be good soon. Forget yeah. Just leave the rest of them. But out. special shout outs to the Pistons being the bottom of the East. Hey man, Wiseman has had shown some some little signs. Marvin Bagley is healthy again, looking good. Isaiah and Livers has had some moments. If the Pistons lose a couple more games, they are locked in to a top three seed, which means highest odds. And the Spurs just won. Listen, yeah, we're right there. And then we get to the wild, wild west, as always. Uh, Denver, however, has separated themselves home of the most likely three-time MVP yeah that's pretty crazy Nikola Jokic he just had another triple double last night that was his hundredth triple double of his career wild wild uh Memphis is the two seed they just beat the Lakers last night um Lakers are basically done because LeBron James is going to be out for basically the end of the season poor Lakers eh, so unfortunate they're fine, they're fine. <laughs> Um, uh, shouts out to Jared Vanderbilt. Yeah, I need to say that that well, game he had against Dallas, his defensive impact and his rebound. I love him as a player. You wouldn't I have really said that do. though last night against Memphis. I still love Jared. Van- he's he, not gonna be. He's not gonna be. He had a lot perfect. of turnovers last night. Well, he's Jared Vanderbilt isn't supposed to have the ball that much. <laughs> he fell on the floor every opportunity he got. I saw it, it happens. Um, Sacramento, light the beam, Joey. Sacramento, the threes. light the beam. <laughs> I really wish Kevin Herter didn't change his number to nine because nine just looks so ugly in Sacramento jerseys. 36 and 25. 
seven and three in their last ten. Four game win streak. Mm-hmm. They just got it working. De'Aaron they Fox is back. Working. De'Aaron Fox is back. Sabonis is dominating on the boards. Mm-hmm. Malik Monk catching fire. Their their roster makes sense. Yeah, their roster just makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then we got the Suns. Suns are thirty three and twenty nine. Kevin Durant is slated to play tonight. I hate that he's coming out tonight to against, play against Charlotte. It's so terrible. <laughs> Him not debuting Sunday made me so mad. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It is what it is. Gets to play one of the worst teams in the league. Uh, Golden State, 32 and 30. They're still without Steph Curry they're, for a little while. They're hanging on by a thread. They're mm-hmm. hanging on. They're probably going to make the playoffs. Yeah. I, I think they'll be okay, but they are on the thread. Uh, then we got the Clippers. Russ uh, went from one LA team to another. The Clippers are they're a weird team. They're, they're clipping. They should be one of the better teams in the league. And they're not. They Russ they, looks good though. I will be honest. I has. watched the game closely last night. Yeah. He's looked but good. Their their problem this season has been their lack of production from their guards. Yeah. And they brought in Russ for that reason. Who knows how well it's gonna go. But Kawhi Leonard is getting healthier. They you also, look like prime Kawhi. A few mm-hmm. times in the past two weeks. Paul George is Paul George. The other problem I will say that they have, turnovers and lack of defense. If they can figure that out, they'll be fine. Um, Dallas, there's a seventh they, seed right now. 32 and 31. They still haven't figured it out with Luka and Kyrie. It's yeah. only been five games, mm-hmm. but they're one and four in those five. Jason Kidd is back to being a weird coach. Yeah. After being great last year, he just does things that don't make any sense. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they they, I'd be afraid if I was a Mavericks fan right now. And then we got Minnesota, thirty two and thirty two without Carl Anthony Towns. They just got Rudy Gobert back. That young man, Anthony Edwards, he's good. That man, he's good. Is a problem. Also, guys like Nas Reed stepping up. I I love Nas Reed. Him being six eleven and having all that skill. Yeah. And Rudy has actually played well, except he could not get a rebound last night for some reason. He, he's Rudy. He's going to have those types of nights uh, where he just disappears yeah. and makes everybody. But well, he did good offensively, actually. I should have kept Walker Kessler. <laughs> yeah, they're basically Congratulations, the trade. Minnesota. Uh, Stan Van Gundy made that comment. <laughs> you made on, a trade for no reason. Yeah, they made the comment that uh, Walker Kessler has basically played better than Rudy Gobert this yeah. season, and they gave up all that stuff. It's hilarious. Which is unfortunate. <laughs> uh, Utah, they're still sitting there. They're still hanging on. I hope they make the playoffs because they're a fun team. I, I'm so happy for Laurie Markkinen. Mm-hmm. I'm happy for Will Hardy taking this mismatch group of just different journeymen and making them a decent team. Yeah. Be good for Utah, man. It just hurts that Colin Sexton did get hurt again. So we'll see how long that keeps him out. And then New Orleans, the Pelicans, that, my I, team. I think they're going to be out. <sighs> just, it's like you they said. They can't stay healthy, Zion man. Zion can't stay healthy. Now Jose Alvarado's out for tonight. Yeah. <sighs> I, I don't know. I hope they can hang on because they can always make some noise if they make the play-in tournament, but it's going to be spooky. Then we got Portland at 29 and 32. Mr. 71. Dame Willard. Yeah. The efficiency on that game is just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It was a 71 on 39 shots. Something like that. And Thir- he, didn't yeah. take very, he didn't take very many free throws. 13 of 22 from three. Hit 13 threes. Yeah. It was impressive. Yeah. That's about it for Portland. Let's move on. Yeah. Lakers, Braun is gone. Yep. OKC has a chance to Listen, make the play-in tournament. Shouts out to OKC, man. I I love their young players. I love their core. Jalen Williams had Jalen Williams 28. From Clara. I love him. He had like 28 points last night. I love him. Josh Giddy's gotten better every game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they're fun. Really fun. And last thing that I'll mention before we got to go, from the fourth seed to Oklahoma City, who is basically almost at the bottom. Four-game separation. Exactly. <laughs> Four to five-game separation. Yeah. Uh it's anybody's game in the West. That's why we're calling it the Wild Wild West. Um, okay, we've run out of time. It's crazy. Um, it's March Madness for a reason. We got NFL Combine stuff starting, so we'll probably mention that next week a little bit. Um, is Bryce some- Young 5'10"? Or is he 5'9"? Find out on the next episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, we'll do more college basketball updates. Like I said, we'll talk about some of the tournaments that are going on right now, some of the upcoming tournaments because we'll be able to preview almost fully um, all the main conference tournaments. Give a couple more NBA updates. There shouldn't be next week, um, from this week to next week necessarily. Uh, But if something interesting happens, we'll talk about it. Uh, But after that, 
It's all March Madness. It's all college basketball all the time. Uh, this has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next time. When are you buying your Mac McClung jersey, Joey? Whether it's G League, Sixers, wherever he's been, get the Gate City High School jersey. Just, just go all the way.